Hello, my name is Wayne Morse, and I wanted to thank CNI for the opportunity to speak on sustainable digital innovation, sharing some key factors from uh, what I feel is a successful higher education model. I wanted to share a little background about myself. I've recently retired from Emory University after 26 years, and during that time had the opportunity to work with wonderful people to build two centers. The first was Emory Center for Interactive Teaching, started in 2000 with some equipment left over from Apple Computers coverage of the 96 Olympics in Atlanta. It was focused on digital pedagogy, so really teaching and technology, and back then it was uh, the start of building content online, the start of video conferencing classes, and the start, really, of uh, multimedia production as student assignments. From that center in 2013, um, we used that center as the foundation to build a Center for Digital Scholarship, a new center, really bringing together several areas across IT and the library into a central point of resources and services uh, for the university. And in that, it, I felt as though we did a major move, not only um, from the service model to a partnership model, but also moving a lot of the things from previous centers that were successful and sustainable into the architecture of the new group. Now, I wanted to provide some guidelines for my talk today on sustainable digital innovation. First of all, um, a lot of the things that I'm going to sh share, the practices and outcomes, are particular to my experiences at Emory University. Although I can see by making some slight altercations and tailoring things to unique uh, circumstances at uh, individual institutions, that these things could be applicable to other places as well. Within my talk, I'm focusing on three high-level factors. One is the broad support from the university administration or the institution administration and clients of the group, the center. Um, I call them clients, people. You can also call them customers. You can call them patrons. I happen to call them clients. Um, the second is the human and financial resources. And those are so important and so critical in sustainability in being able to not only have the right le levels of both of those, but also to sometimes grow and maintain those from year to year. And third is uh, innovation pathways, ways to innovate, ways to make changes to a traditional, and I'm doing air quotes right now, model um, that allow for a more sustainable, I feel a more sustainable digital uh, pathway. And last but not least, um, a guideline for the talk today is that I'm going to be using uh, an analogy of a stool in order to sust uh, to um, demonstrate um, successful st sustainability practices. And that's really, you know, the, the old axiom of if uh, three legs are good and required to create a stool that is secure, then four legs are even better. So that's what I'm going to have today is a four-legged stool of sustainability. And the legs you can see here in this graphic, are in no particular order, partnership, alignment, elasticity, and agility. And I'm going to cover each of those uh, within my talk in separate sections as we go forward. So first, alignment. Now with this, I'm talking uh, the alignment to the institution's mission um, to its uh, to the individual organization's mission and to their overall university mission and guidelines. The way that we found uh, um, to be successful in keeping the center growing and evolving is really to focus on trying to provide unique experiences and levels of expertise within the campus um, environment. So find, um, as they say, find a niche, find a place that there is demand, um, but not resources there available, um, that perhaps faculty are going off campus to get resources, things that you already have in-house, but perhaps that if they are aligned or combined with others, 
um, will um, fill a unique void and create um, some wonderful resources for campus. The alignment also is critical in um, having everyone on board to review all the work that comes through the center. And by saying all, um, there are some lesser things, small projects. Um, you have to determine your own thresholds for these projects. Um, but anything, let's say, for example, that takes more than um, 16 hours of work and two or three people's resources and time um, would require a project proposal that needed to be vetted by the entire team. Uh, so that I know that takes a little extra time, and I know that puts a little extra strain on folks, but I think, and we felt as though it really uh, helped us keep all projects in-house aligned with our mission in a very concrete way. Another piece of alignment, too, is um, leveraging a governance body. Our center started out in IT and is now part of the library since I have left, uh, but we had a governing body that was comprised of campus leaders, uh, faculty predominantly, a lot of them, a lot of whom have been um, clients of the centers, but some who have not just had their areas of expertise around digital humanities. And uh, that group provided a wonderful uh, resource, not only to keep the work aligned with the mission um, and help us um, justify saying no to some folks, uh, but also uh, to get the word out across campus of the great work being done by the team um, and take the temperature of the campus. So there's lots of, um, lots of inputs and outputs that that group can have that can be beneficial for uh, maintaining sustainability. Another key part of alignment is building partnership agreements with other areas across the campus that have expertise that is either complementary or extends the capabilities of your team. This really helped as projects very rarely stay, stay within the bounds of one unit. Uh, they have pieces that go out into the individual, individual part, uh, departments. They have pieces that perhaps go um, to uh, IT or to other research areas and groups around campus. So having these partnership agreements with these other groups uh, before projects come, but really also using projects to leverage those is a critical aspect of sustainability. The next leg of the stool of sustainability is partnership. I'm going to highlight three different types of partnerships that we leveraged in our center to help with sustainability. One is internal partnerships, and by that I mean within your own org organization. So with our case, it was either the IT or the library, and that was predominantly to allow experts in these outside areas to come and work on projects that were being hosted and built within the center. Not only did it allow them to come and work, but as importantly, it allowed their administrators and their supervisors to understand why they were working on these and to be recognized for their work in projects that were shared between our center and the other parts of our organization. The next type of partnership is external on our campus. And those were predominantly with related teams uh, dealing with um, some areas of expertise that we had within our group, like 3D modeling. But they were in the sciences and even in the health sciences and those worked out nicely on grant funding opportunities, um, on really increasing the visibility of our projects and our capabilities and resources within the center, and also learning new things about new platforms and new techniques. And the third type of partnership we did was one that were outside the institution. And that's what had to do with areas that had strategic areas of content or data related to our projects. So, for example, we had one with the Atlanta History Center and with the CDC and with um, different cities around the state of Georgia as we partnered with them in building historical tours using our app. So one interesting fact was when we worked with the History Center is that they had a long history 
of working with vendors and didn't really have much of a partnership with people outside the institution. So although it took a lot of effort to understand and come together on a shared outcome and understand which part we both had to play, it was well worth building a strong relationship. And really that idea of being a partner versus being uh, a service uh, it's really kind of changed the way that people thought about each other. So it really helped build, I would argue, um, the creativity, understanding that we were all working towards a centralized goal, that we were working in perhaps different ways, but we all wanted to reach a similar agreed upon outcome. And it also helped in the case of our relationship, our partnership with the CDC that I mentioned, is that they were using some grant funds to... Um, hire or pay for some hours of one of our our data experts, which then in turn we could take those funds and put them back into our budget and pay for additional students to work. So um, it really helped having that type of partnership um, and really helped in the reporting portion of that as well. And to be able to have someone in another external unit not only share the vision for what you want, but also know that they're invested in investment and resources and time. They're going to be held accountable to show up to project meetings. They're going to be held accountable to say yes or no at certain key parts within the project and then accountable for the project after it's complete. So all those really um, were achievable through the idea of a partnership and creating these partnership agreements. Elasticity. So now this is a kind of an interesting word because it's really, I'm focusing on the ability to change and adapt. And what we did, which I would argue is one of the, one of the reasons why we were so successful and continue to be, was an idea of developing an internal professional development program. It started with a, a workshop we did with faculty where we partnered them with graduate students and then evolved into the graduate students coming to us saying, Where's our program? So we built a digital scholarship training program, and this grew and grew based on the expertise within the center. So the subject matter experts for these training programs were our own staff members and built a curriculum that was constantly evolving every year. Um, new student, we'd have new student leaders. We'd have them go through the curriculum and the content and identify things that needed to be changed and not changed. And then in turn, we had one of our staff members facilitate and keep track of who was going through what parts of the program so we could use the graduate students and assign them to project teams um, based upon the areas of expertise they had and their interests, and even had students move all the way up to project leads after they took some uh, courses that we built on project management. So it's really something that allowed and allows um, the center to scale. It allows it to move and evolve as we can bring in new students as grants and grant funds come. We could assign students to those to those grants and pay for those funds to hire more uh, students. So it, it, it continues to work out well and I think really has been one of the keys, if not the key, to um, the sustainability of uh, the center at Emory. In addition to creating that, the professional development course, uh, you really have to change some of the operational pathways in order to ensure elasticity. Um, so you have to have something that frees up those resources at the end of each project so they're ready to be assigned to another project. And that entails agreeing on the scope, the scale, the size of each project, what are the key milestones, what are the deliverables, so you don't get, air quotes again, mission creep, um, that these have a lifespan. They are reviewed after a certain amount of time to see if they're still sustainable um, based on their technology and based on some of the key aspects of their scholarship. And these all have to be agreed on before work so that these processes and pathways will be understood by all parties 
And as projects complete, then people can be assigned and take on new work. Part of this included building uh, an internally hosting system, hosted system for the completed projects. So, of course, it was cloud-based between AWS and DreamHost, where projects, when they were finished, could go up there and with faculty funding could get continued care and feeding and uh, basic support. And um, that really helped free up a lot of our engineering resources and other resources to do other projects. The next leg of the stool is agility. So here by agility, uh, again, we had the idea of focusing on proof of concept projects, ones that would not go years and years and years, but would allow us within a reasonable amount of time to test something out, see if it worked, leverage that for faculty and for our center to go get grant funding to continue or find other sources in order to build it out to scale. Another piece of the agility um, leg of the sustainability stool was for us being able to carry funds over from fiscal year to fiscal year. Because a lot of our work extended the bounds given grant cycles and other things of just a fiscal year. So we were lucky enough to have a, an account where we could carry funds over and bring those forward for when we had to, to scale or had to take on or wanted to take on additional work. Another key aspect of agility for us was maintaining a ratio of client and internal projects. We had to be very cognizant of this um, so we wouldn't have so many internal projects that we did not have any more resources to bring to bear on new faculty requests. So I don't particularly know what the exact ratio is for those, but um, I would say you need to have a minimal amount of internal projects that need continual kind of care and feeding by your own staff and focus on the external ones. And that's not an easy thing to do because in our case, our internal staff was comprised of scholars in their own right and people who got wonderful research, uh, research grants. So it's a tricky, it's trickier to do than it is to say, but it is something that requires um, some, some thinking and some, and some time on task to figure that out but it is a key aspect of the agility part of sustainability. And being able to take what you have in your expertise portfolio and leverage that across groups with other campus again helps out so well in not only addressing client need, but also in achieving grants. Some of these aspects of agility are tougher to figure out than others. Um, establishing, you know, a group mindset of agility, it, it was, was not easy. It takes a lot of work, not only internally within our team, but also externally across our organization. So it was something that everyone really had to come to grips with. We really had to work on why it was important and why it fit into a higher level of sustainability for the team and really was part and parcel of our uh, mission in order to fulfill what we needed to to survive and continue to grow at the university. So our digital sustainability goal included all four legs of this stool and blending them all to reach a sustainable future. Here I've included a recent quote from a work published by um, Katzman and Devaney about what the ultimate goal is for higher ed as far as agility and sustainability. But I would argue that it's something that takes work. It's something you have to do from the ground up and has to be included in all aspects of the work and bought in by the entire team and organization. Again, I wanted to thank CNI for this opportunity and welcome anyone to contact me at my email address shown here uh, for any questions or information that I might be able to provide. Thank you.